The Mapogo, Majingalane, and Saladis are legends of the African savannas. These lions embody strength, dominance, and survival, and their stories are marked by power struggles, territorial conquests, and the untamed wilderness instincts of apex predators. As we embark on this mesmerizing journey, we'll delve into the sagas of the most terrifying lion coalitions ever witnessed, offering a fascinating glimpse into their fierce world. Join us as we explore the lives of the most formidable lion coalitions, the Mapogo, Majingalane, and Salatis. The beginning of an era. The Sabi Sand Game Reserve, nestled at the eastern border of Kruger National Park, was home to the Gusbada Pride, one of the largest lion prides in the region. This formidable pride was led by the Spider Pride, composed of seven lionesses under the dominance of five aging West Street males who were past their prime. However, a significant shift occurred when a young male named Makulu, barely two years old, joined the Spider Pride in the early 2000s. Initially, his presence was met with resistance, especially when two lionesses gave birth shortly after his arrival. The lionesses were not pleased with Makulu's presence. Makulu faced a challenging journey to gain acceptance. With time, as the West Street males aged and the coalition dwindled, Makulu's assistance in hunting big prey earned him the trust and acceptance of the lionesses. As their cubs grew, Makulu formed lifelong bonds with them. By 2002, the cubs had grown into young adults. Rasta, Pretty Boy, and Scar, along with Makulu, spent a lot of time together. Rasta and Pretty Boy, often referred to as the twins, shared a close bond. Dreadlocks, or Scar, was slightly younger but grew up with them. Meanwhile, Mr. T and Kinky Tail, born later, were raised separately from the Pride. When the last of the West Street males passed away, the Spider Pride reunited, and Makulu played a crucial role in maintaining their dominance. In 2006, they ventured out to conquer new territories, entering the land of Langolini, who controlled the Odawa Pride. A confrontation led to the disappearance of Langolini, signaling the rise of this new coalition. How the Mapogo Coalition Dominated Prides This force, the Mapogo Coalition, would redefine the hierarchy of the lion world. Initially comprising six brothers, the alliance later expanded to seven with the addition of a lion from an unrelated pride. Their name, Mapogo, is derived from a local word meaning vagabond or bandit, which aptly captured their fearsome and formidable nature. The Mapogo journey began in the western sector of Sabi Sand, a region renowned for its rich biodiversity. As young lions, they ventured away from their natal pride, a rite of passage commonly undertaken by young male lions. Typically, young males form coalitions either with siblings or other young lions they encounter, finding strength in numbers. However, for the Mapogo, this natural inclination to form a coalition had unprecedented consequences, primarily owing to their sheer number and unity. Their initial attempts to establish territory were marked by confrontations with resident males. Territorial disputes like this are a natural aspect of lion behavior, where power, dominance, and the right to mate with resident females are at stake. Yet what set the Mapogo apart was their brutal approach. In the world of lions, death rarely results from territorial battles, with most conflicts ending in the retreat of the weaker party. However, the Mapogo seemed to defy this norm. Their early conquests were characterized by ruthlessness, often peaking with the demise of their rivals. This unyielding approach sent shockwaves through the region, with many viewings them as the harbingers of a new, more ruthless era. The Mapogo strategy was to rapidly expand and solidify their territory with each conquest. As they did so, their domain grew, and so did their reputation. Tales of their might and ferocity spread like wildfire among both animals and the humans observing them. The coalition's strength lay not just in their numbers, but also in their unity. They operated with precision and coordination that inspired both awe and terror. Their collaborative hunting techniques allowed them to take down prey much larger than themselves, further cementing their status as apex predators.
As they aged, the dynamics within the coalition evolved, and the dominance hierarchy, an intrinsic aspect of lion behavior, began to manifest more distinctly. Certain members of the coalition, like the lions named Mr. T and Kinky Tail, were often seen leading the charge in territorial conquests and hunts. These two lions, in particular, became symbols of the Mapogo legacy, with their individual strengths and personalities contributing significantly to the coalition's overall success. In just a few short years, the Mapogo had conquered a vast territory stretching from the western sectors of Sabi Sand to parts of Kruger National Park. Their rule remained unchallenged, and their reputation was unparalleled. With abundant prey and mating rights with numerous lionesses, they secured the perpetuation of their genes. The Mapagos didn't exist to just survive, they existed to dominate in the rawest form. Their intention is glaring, since lion behavior is fundamentally rooted in territory. A pride's territory determines its access to resources, prey, and potential mates. For the Mapogo, territorial acquisition was a manifestation of their unmatched dominance. With each territorial conquest, their sphere of influence expanded, resulting in a territory that became one of the largest ever recorded in the region. It stretched across vast expanses of the Sabi Sand Game Reserve and eventually extended into parts of the renowned Kruger National Park. This extensive territory was not just a symbol of their power, it also provided them with a strategic advantage. The diverse landscapes within their domain offered a variety of prey species, from agile impalas in the grasslands to formidable buffaloes in denser areas. The Mapogo enjoyed a diverse diet that significantly contributed to their health, strength, and longevity. Hunting, typically a pride's responsibility, took on a unique dynamic when the Mapogo were involved as well. While lionesses traditionally led hunts, the Mapago often participated, leveraging their sheer strength and size. Their hunting techniques were a spectacle to behold, characterized by a combination of stealth, coordination, and brute force. They would single out and flank their prey, taking turns to chase and wear it down. These collaborative hunts, especially when targeting larger prey like buffaloes, showcased their unity and precision. More than just a quest for food, these hunts were exhibitions of power, sending a clear message to any rival prides or nomadic males that ventured too close. The impact of the Mapogo on surrounding pride was profound and at times devastating. As they expanded their territory, resident prides were faced with the stark choice to either submit to Mapogo's dominance or risk potential annihilation. The coalition's approach was straightforward. Any pride that posed a threat, either due to its size or resident males, was confronted head-on. These confrontations often led to the dispersal or elimination of resident males. Lionesses from defeated pride had to align with the Mapogo or be ousted. This brutal strategy, while ensuring the Mapogo continued dominance, also facilitated their genetic legacy as they frequently sired cubs with the lionesses of subjugated pride. Yet, Mapogo's influence extended beyond dominance and expansion. During their reign, they played a crucial role in maintaining the delicate balance of the ecosystem. As apex predators, their hunting helped regulate herbivore populations, ensuring that vegetation remained in check. In the intricate web of life that unfolds in the wild, maintaining ecological balance is paramount to preserving the biodiversity of a region. Even in their ferocity, the Mapogo lions contributed to this circle of life. Alas, the sun that rises must eventually set, and such is the nature of life in the wild. The most dominant reigns ultimately faced challenges and eventual decline, and the Mapogos, despite their unparalleled power and dominance, were no exception to this natural law. Their fall was as profound and impactful as their rise, marked by a series of confrontations, internal dynamics, and the relentless march of time. The first signs of challenges to the Mapogo reign emerged in the form of new coalitions and nomadic males edging closer to their territory. As with any dominant force, their vast territory and influence made them a prime target for ambitious lions seeking to establish their own dominance. 
These new coalitions, having observed and learned from the strategies of the coalition, began to employ similar tactics, often grouping in larger numbers to enhance their chances of success. One such formidable challenge came from the Majingalani Coalition, a group of young, robust lions determined to carve out a territory of their own. Their initial clashes with the pride were testaments to their ambition and strength. While Mapogos had the advantage of experience and a legendary reputation, the Majingalani had the vigor of youth and a burning desire to establish their rule. Internal dynamics also played a role in the Mapogos' decline. As the years rolled on, age began to take its toll on the members of the coalition. Their once united front started showing cracks, with individual lions often wandering off on their own or in smaller groups. This dispersion made them more vulnerable to confrontations and reduced their collective strength, which had been one of their greatest assets. The defining moment came during a series of intense confrontations between the Mapagos and the Majinjalanis, battles that raged for days and resulted in the tragic deaths of some of the most iconic members of the Mapogo coalition. Kinky Tail, a symbol of the Mapagos' strength and dominance, met a brutal end at the paw of the rising Majingalane coalition. This loss was not just physical, but also dealt a significant blow to the morale and unity of the remaining lions. Subsequent years saw the Mapagos retreating from their once vast territories, with the remaining members seeking solace in the fringes of their former domain. The relentless pressure from emerging coalitions, combined with the effects of age and injuries sustained in numerous battles, gradually wore them down. One by one, the legends of the African savanna met their end, either due to confrontations or the natural progression of life. The Mapogo Coalition, known for dominating nine prides and siring many cubs, left an indelible mark on the history of Sabi Sand. Their story, a testament to their unique bond and fierce battles, will continue to resonate far beyond the borders of the reserve. In the wake of their reign, some of their offspring lived on, carrying the legacy forward. The sons of the Mapagos, born into the Ottawa pride, ventured into Kruger National Park by the end of 2011, likely to establish their dominance and sire more cubs. Also, the daughters of Mr. T and Kinky Tail, born into the Salala pride, continued to propagate the Mapogo bloodline within the Kambula pride, the largest lion pride in Sabi Sand. Ultimately, one chapter in the annals of lion dominance came to a close with the waning of the Mapogos, and another was set to begin with the emergence of the Machingilanis. Mapogos Conquest and Rise of the Majingilani. The Majingilan males, aptly named after night watchmen marching with unwavering purpose, have earned their reputation as one of Londolozzi Game Reserve's most successful male lion coalitions over the past decade. Their dominance extended over multiple prides, and their territory became so vast that effective patrol required them to frequently split up. Sightings of the entire coalition together were rare, as they maintained their grip on the land. Originating from the Magnoletti Game Reserve, the Majingalani Coalition was born around 2004 or 2005. By late 2009, the five brothers were compelled to leave their natal area and move south into Sabi Sands. Rather than acting as solitary hunters, they chose to work as a united front, roaming like a marauding gang, causing turmoil among the various species dwelling in the region. However, it wasn't until June 2010 that the Majingalan coalition asserted its dominance with full force. On the 8th of June, they faced off against two formidable Mapogo males, Mr. T and Kinky Tail. The ensuing battle was nothing short of brutal, with Kinky Tail and Mr. T isolating one of the Majingalane males and breaking his spine with savage bites. The wounded lion was torn apart and eaten alive. Wounded lion was torn apart and eaten alive. The Majingalane retaliated, and in a horrifying sequence, they pinned down Kinky Tail, mirroring the gruesome fate he had dealt to one of their own. Kinky Tail met his demise in the same manner as he had inflicted upon a Majingalani brother. Following this violent confrontation, Mr. T fled to the western sector of Sabi Sands, where his surviving brothers awaited. 
Although anticipation brewed for a dramatic showdown between the two coalitions, it never came to pass. The remaining four Majingalani males successfully seized control of much of Londolozi, including the Marthly area, and gradually extended their dominance south and west of the Sand River. Their territorial expansion came at the cost of purging the lands of any lions that dared to oppose their rule. These lions, drawing inevitable comparisons to the legendary Mapagos, brought their unique brand of leadership, dominance, and strategy to the intricate dynamics of the savanna. Originating from the distant grasslands of Kruger National Park, the Majingulanis began as a quartet of robust young lions with a clear ambition to carve out a territory worthy of their collective strength. Their early days were characterized by exploration and learning. Observing coalitions like the Mapagos provided these young lions with valuable insights into the strategies and tactics required for territorial dominance. Similar to the Mapagos, the Majingulanis understood the power of unity. They moved with synchronized intent, every action radiating the ambition that burned within them. As they ventured closer to the territories held by the Mapagos, it became clear that a confrontation between these two powerhouses was not just likely but inevitable. However, the Majingalanis displayed a strategic patience that set them apart. Instead of immediate confrontations, they spent time gauging the strengths and weaknesses of their opponents. They observed the dispersed movements of the aging Mapagos, recognized potential cracks in their unity, and waited for opportune moments to strike. This element of patience, combined with their youthful vigor, became a cornerstone of their strategy. When confrontations did occur, the Majingalanis showcased a brutality that mirrored the early days of the Mapagos. They understood that to establish their dominance, they had to decisively defeat the reigning champions of the land. Battles raged, with the Majingalanis often emerging as the victors, slowly chipping away at the territories and the morale of the Mapagos. Their first conquest involved the revered Salala Pride, where they eliminated eight sub-adults, leaving only four young lionesses and their three mothers. Astonishingly, two of the adult lionesses submitted to the Majingalani males, engaging in mating rituals with the very lions that had brutally killed their own cubs mere months prior. Nature's complex mechanisms sometimes result in seemingly paradoxical outcomes, ensuring that only the fittest and most robust genes survive. During their prime rule over Sabi Sands, the Majingalanis asserted control over a staggering 267 square kilometers or 26,676 hectares of land. To grasp the enormity of this territory, imagine it as equivalent to 50,706 American football fields. Beyond their strategic confrontations, the Majingilanis displayed a keen understanding of pride dynamics. Instead of eradicating entire pride, as the Mapogos often did, the Majingilanis occasionally chose a more diplomatic approach. They integrated subjugated prides under their rule, providing protection and stability in exchange for loyalty. This approach not only expanded their domain, but also created a network of allied prides that could come to their aid if needed. However, it's important to note that the Mahingalanis didn't shy away from conflict. When challenged, they responded with a ferocity reminiscent of the Mapogos. Their confrontations were deliberate displays of power, often resulting in them reinforcing their dominance and expanding their territories. The interactions of the Majingalani weren't restricted to confrontations and diplomacy alone. They also displayed a certain level of tolerance, especially toward young males. Recognizing the potential threats these young lions posed, the Majingilanis occasionally allowed them to pass through their territories without immediate aggression, as long as they showed no signs of challenging the status quo. This pragmatic approach reduced unnecessary conflicts and showcased a mature understanding of long-term dominance. The hunting techniques, much like the Mapogos, emphasized collaboration. However, with the Majingilanis, there was a notable division of roles. While all members participated in hunts, certain lions took on specialized roles, whether it was chasing, flanking, or delivering the final blow. 
This specialization showcased their adaptability and understanding of each member's strengths. Yet, for all their strategic differences, the Majingalanis couldn't escape comparisons with the Mapagos. Both coalitions showcased the power and importance of strategic dominance and the inevitable challenges of maintaining vast territories. While the Mapagos were often seen as brute forces of nature, the Majingalani added layers of strategy, patience, and occasionally diplomacy to their playbook. The territories ruled by the coalition stretched across a breathtaking expanse, encompassing parts of the Sabi Sand Game Reserve and encroaching on the edges of Kruger National Park. These lands, teeming with biodiversity, offered the coalition a buffet of prey, from nimble impalas darting across the grasslands to formidable buffalo roaming in herds. However, these territories were more than just a source of sustenance. They were symbols of the Majingalani's unyielding grip on the region, testaments to their strength and strategic prowess. One of the notable features of the Majingalane reign was their interaction with other prides. Their strategy of employing diplomacy helped maintain relative peace and create a network of prides that acknowledged their dominance. Oh, there she go. Their influence in the region was undeniable. Under the reign of this pride, the territories witnessed relative stability, with fewer violent overthrows and pride takeovers. Their approach also meant that lionesses and cubs were less frequently subjected to the traumatic experiences of pride takeovers, which often resulted in cub mortality. This relative stability led to an increase in the lion population in their territories, reflecting a prosperous era under the Majingalani. Beyond the intricacies of population dynamics, the Majingalan also played a pivotal role in maintaining the ecological balance of the region. They significantly reduced the hyena population in the area, surpassing any other lion coalition in hyena kills. This phenomenon was witnessed by a guest, Rich Levin, during his visit to Londolozi, and he recounted the intense encounter. <laughs> As apex predators, their hunting habits and patterns directly influenced herbivore populations. Their dominance ensured that overgrazing was kept in check, preserving the delicate balance on which savanna ecosystems thrived. However, the journey to dominance in the wild is never straightforward. For all their might, strategy, and influence, the Majingalanis were not exempt from the trials and tribulations that nature invariably imposes on its rulers. While their reign was marked by significant achievements, it was also punctuated by challenges that tested their unity, resilience, and adaptability. One of the primary obstacles the coalition faced was the sheer vastness of their territory. While this expanse was a testament to their dominance, it also became a logistical challenge. The coalition had to continually patrol their borders, ensuring that potential rivals were kept at bay. This constant vigilance, while necessary, often left them spread thin, opening pockets of vulnerabilities that ambitious young males in emerging coalitions could potentially exploit. Confrontations were an inevitable part of their rule. While the Majingalanis were adept at handling skirmishes and often emerged as victors, each battle took its toll. Injuries, even if minor, accumulated over time, reducing the overall effectiveness of the coalition in subsequent confrontations. Moreover, these physical confrontations were draining psychological endeavors, and they constantly tested the coalition's resolve and unity. Another challenge was the internal dynamics within the coalition itself. As the years progressed, individual members aged at different rates, leading to varied levels of capability and strength. This natural progression meant that certain lions had to bear more responsibility, causing occasional rifts and disagreements among members. While their unity had been their strength, these internal strains occasionally threatened to weaken their collective front. Their diplomatic approach to dominance, though effective in many instances, was not foolproof. By integrating defeated prides under their protection, they also took on the responsibility of ensuring the safety and sustenance of these prides. This added layer of responsibility sometimes stretched their resources, making it difficult to cater to the needs of all the prides under their domain. Moreover, 
While many prides acknowledged their dominance, there were instances where younger lions from these subjugated prides showed signs of rebellion, seeking to carve out a niche for themselves. Disease and the challenges of the natural environment also posed significant threats. From outbreaks of illnesses like mange to natural calamities that disrupted the delicate ecosystem they thrived in, the Majingalanes had to navigate these unforeseen challenges, ensuring the health and well-being of not just themselves, but also the prides under their protection. Now, it's time for today's subscriber pick. There are so many lion prides, each with their own unique stories and legacies. This picture is a testament to the many lion coalitions that haven't had their stories covered. We've delved into the histories of prides like the Mapago and Majinjalani, witnessing their triumphs and trials. Yet these are just a few examples among many. Lions, these magnificent and powerful creatures, symbolize the untamed wilderness like no other. They embody strength, unity, and the relentless spirit of the wild. These are traits that we, as stewards of our planet, should admire and protect. In the face of various threats, including habitat loss and human-wildlife conflict, it's crucial to ponder how we can better preserve these apex predators in the modern age. We've seen firsthand how some prides, like the Mapogo, have faced their demise, while others have risen to power. These stories teach us that lion, like all wildlife, are resilient but not invincible. So, have you ever had the privilege to witness the grandeur of these lions in their natural habitats? If you have, perhaps you've pondered how these experiences can be enhanced or made more sustainable. How do you think we can strike a balance between human development and the preservation of these animals? Let's hear from you in the comment section below. The Reign of the Salatis Every era in the wilderness introduces a set of characters that leave an indelible mark on its chronicles. Following in the paw prints of the mighty Mapagos and the strategic Majingulanes were the Salatis, a new force rising on the horizon. They brought with them a blend of vigor, ambition, and their distinct style of dominance. Hailing from the southern stretches of Kruger National Park, the Salatis were initially shadowy figures, Tales of their exploits whispered through the grasslands before they ever set foot in the territories dominated by the Majingilanes. This southern origin, distant from the heart of Majingilane territory, gave the Salatis a unique advantage. They had the opportunity to observe, learn, and cultivate their strategies without immediate threat or confrontation. The Salatis were notable not just for their raw strength, but also for their uncanny ability to move with a silent, ghost-like presence. Their stealthy approach earned them a reputation as phantoms of the savanna, making their movements unpredictable and often catching rival prides off guard. This element of surprise was a strategic advantage, allowing them to make significant territorial gains with minimal resistance. As their territory expanded and their reputation grew, tales of their unity and coordination became legendary. Much like their predecessors, the Mapogo and Majingalani, the Salatis understood the power of a united front. Each member brought a distinct set of skills, and they operated with an almost telepathic synchronization, seamlessly transitioning from hunting to defending their territory. Yet what set the Salatis apart was not just their prowess or unity, but their adaptability. The African savanna is a theater of constant change, with shifting alliances, environmental challenges, and evolving prey dynamics. The Salatis showcased the ability to read these shifts and adapt swiftly, whether it was changing hunting techniques based on available prey or recalibrating territorial strategies based on rival movements, they were always two steps ahead. Their interactions with other prides were marked by a mix of diplomacy and dominance. While they had no qualms about asserting their authority, they also exhibited moments of unexpected benevolence, especially towards younger lions. This blend of fierceness and compassion made their rule unpredictable, keeping rival prides constantly on their toes. The heart of the Salatis' story lay in their territorial pursuits, a relentless drive that saw them annex vast stretches of the savanna. Their map of dominance stretched and evolved, bearing witness to their ambition and testament to their rule. 
Starting from the southern fringes of Kruger National Park, the Saladas expanded methodically. Instead of aggressive, swift takeovers, they chose a measured pace, ensuring that each new territory was fully assimilated and secure before moving on to the next. This patience was a cornerstone of their strategy, allowing them to build a stable foundation that would support their larger ambitions. As their territories grew, so did their encounters with resident prides. Each interaction was a calculated dance, a mix of assertion and understanding. The Saladis, with their signature blend of fierceness and compassion, often gave prides a choice to either acknowledge their dominance and live in relative peace, or resist and face the might of the coalition. More often than not, prides chose the former, recognizing the futility of confrontation against such a formidable force. It wasn't just the promise of peace that swayed many prides to the Saladis' rule, though. It was mostly the unique style of governance they brought. The pride were more than just dominant rulers. They were stewards of the lion community. Their vast territories were patrolled to ward off potential rivals and to ensure the well-being of the prides under their protection. This sense of responsibility earned them genuine loyalty and respect. Their dominant strategies also leaned heavily on the psychological. By moving silently and unpredictably, they created an atmosphere of unease among rival males. The message was clear. The Saladis were everywhere, watching and ready to strike if challenged. This silent assertion often dissuaded potential confrontations, maintaining relative peace in their territories. However, their rule was not without conflicts. In instances where prides resisted or ambitious young males sought to challenge their authority, the Saladis responded with decisive force. Their coordinated attacks, born from their innate unity, often overwhelmed opponents, reinforcing their dominance. In the ebb and flow of the African Savannah's chronicles, certain tales rise above the rest, casting long shadows and leaving imprints that stand the test of time. The Saladis wrote that kind of story. Their legacy, both tangible in the territories they held and intangible in the memories they forged, redefined what dominance meant in the Lion Kingdom. Their approach, a blend of strategy, compassion, and strength, created a rule that was not just about power, but also about stewardship. Prides under their domain didn't merely exist in subdued acceptance. They often flourished, a testament to the Saladis' unique guardianship. This sense of responsibility, the idea that dominance came with the duty of care, shifted perceptions across the savannah. The vast territories they held weren't just markers of their conquests, but symbols of their vision. Their methodical expansion and careful assimilation of new lands showcased a foresight rarely seen. This wasn't the hasty land grab of a coalition seeking power, but the deliberate design of rulers planning for longevity. While their rule had its sunset, the stability they brought to their territories endured, influencing the dynamics of the region long after they were gone. Their psychological dominance, the art of silent assertion, became legendary. By mastering the art of unseen influence, the Salatis introduced a new playbook in the game of power, one that prized the mind as much as might. Subsequent coalitions and young lions sought to emulate this style, making the Saladis' influence resonate across generations. Perhaps the most prevailing aspect of their legacy was the stories they inspired. Every pride they encountered, every young lion that grew under their shadow, carried with them tales of the Saladis. Stories of their compassion, fierce battles, silent prowess, and strategic masterstrokes became a part of the oral tapestry of the savannah. These tales, passed down from one generation to the next, ensured that the Saladis lived on not just as former rulers, but as eternal legends. The stories of these legendary lions and the enduring impact of their battles on the untamed lands of Sabi Sand continue to keep us in awe of the wild. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.